history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to Collins Station. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Good morning. We are following some breaking news out of Texas City. That's where a man was found shot to death and the suspected gunman found hours later after a chase. Now we have learned. We'll tell you what we've learned so far. Uh, voters in Nevada getting ready to make their voices heard as the next presidential caucuses are this weekend there. Uh, what the state's doing to avoid a meltdown like they had up in Iowa. And expect a chill as you head out the door on this Friday morning. Temperatures right now, look at this, in the 40s. But a bit of a warm-up will be coming soon. Justin is tracking Who? your Galveston Mardi Gras weekend forecast is, is as Stable well. Is He morning? is I here. Am. I'm, I'm just appeared. I, I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Awake, somewhat caffeinated, and we'll go from there. No, it's one of those crazy things. This morning, you like, okay, you're gonna wait until the very last minute you gotta get up, right? Mm -hmm. Oh no. 12.25 a.m., I'm like, bing, wide awake. Oh, man. So I was like, I was not. All nighter. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, okay, might as well get up. Now, watch me at 6.15, I'll be Crash dead. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. Anyway, yeah. but you know what? It is Friday. It's cold, as you mentioned before. The cold air is blowing in. We've got the clouds moving out, which is nice. We're going to see some sunshine today. Remember that big orange thing that sits in the sky? That yeah, that that's what that is. Yeah, I read it on the wow. Google. So anyway, <laughs> it's back, which will be nice to see this afternoon, that's for sure. So uh, we'll get into more of that as uh, tonight I've hinted at. We're going to have a real nice weekend, too. So if you're headed down to Mardi Gras, I'm going to have your Mardi Gras forecast coming up here in a couple of minutes. Right now, though, it is chilly, so make sure you're bundled up. We've got low 40s from Bush, Katie. Hobby at 44. Galveston right now, where it is still blowing at about 30 miles an hour with the wind. That wind advisory there until 6 a.m., it's 46 degrees. 30s up into uh, Huntsville, Conroe, and Cleveland. We've got low 40s out towards Katie. So it is going to be on the cool side this morning. Even chillier weather expected for tomorrow morning. We'll get into your weekend forecast. I'll kind of detail where that all is. And then you can see the winds, though, slowly starting to rack until you get down towards the island, where it's about 31 miles an hour. So we're still blowing pretty quickly. Uh, the good news is, is that the cloud cover is all pushing offshore. So once the sun comes up, we should see a real nice looking afternoon. We'll talk more about that and also those mid 50s, which will feel a little better with the sunshine than what we've got for your entire weekend forecast. I will have that come up here in just a bit. Eric. All right, thank you very much, Justin. Time saver traffic now. Let's get a look at what's going on outside and 
Well, we've got a hazmat spill. This is on the north side of town, North Freeway at Spring Steubener. It is not affecting main lanes. It is on the front of drone lanes, but it's on the southbound side of things. Um, shouldn't cause too many problems, obviously, because the main lanes are getting by without any issue. So, yeah, we're looking pretty good so far this morning. Elsewhere, crash-free. Katy Freeway at Blaylock flowing along nicely. We've got good visibility. We've got clear skies. We've got dry roadways. So a beautiful start to our Friday morning. By the way, I hope you're having a great Friday morning. Overall, you're Drive times are delay free right now in the green across the board, north to south, east to west. This is our traffic wheel, our morning traffic wheel, inbound drive times. You can get this anytime updated at clicktohouston.com slash traffic. You can also get all kinds of information regarding traffic around the area. Five big projects, major freeway projects going on around the area, both ongoing now and in the future. All the information you need right there, clicktohouston.com slash traffic. Well, I'm in the new traffic site. Eric, thanks. Uh, breaking news here at 433. From North Harris County, this is uh, what uh, Eric's been talking about, this hazmat spill. Hazmat crews are called out to the 18-wheeler crash in that area. Uh, North Freeway at Spring Stubner. The driver was on the feeder road. The truck flipped trying to take the U-turn. Uh, the hazmat crews were called out for a, a hydraulic fluid leak. No one was hurt, but the cleanup continues. All right, more breaking news. Uh, this is uh, something we've been following since last night. Three people are dead after a shooting in Texas City. That's right. We're told it all started with a double shooting at a mobile home park just off FM 3436, right near FM 517. Officers tell us that it ended in a car crash right on the Gulf Freeway near NASA Road about one hour later. Police say that's where the driver, who is the suspected gunman, took his own life. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli joins us now live from Texas City where this all began. Vincent, we can see this is still a very active scene behind you. Yeah, tonight, that's right. Eight hours later, there are still a lot of officers here. Let me tell you why. Right now, they're working to get a search warrant so they can look for evidence inside this mobile home where the gunfire erupted. Now, take a look at some video that we filmed earlier. Shots were fired at the Green Villa Mobile Park around 8.20 last night. When officers arrived, they discovered a 39-year-old man and a 45-year-old woman shot dead in a trailer. As officers were searching the scene for evidence, they received a tip about the identity of the suspect. So authorities wanted to check out where the suspect lived in Dickinson, and when they arrived, the suspect took off in his truck, and there was a 10-mile high-speed chase. It ended when the suspect crashed into a retaining wall in Webster. Officers secured the scene and found the 39-year-old suspect dead inside his truck from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Right now, Texas City right now, Texas City detectives are trying to piece together what led up to this double murder suicide and why the gunman pulled the trigger. Reporting live in Texas City, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Okay, Vincent, thank you. It's uh, 435 right now. Uh, after a marathon meeting in Lake Conroe, the San Jacinto River Authority Board of Directors has voted to lower lake levels there. Uh, first 12 inches now, and then they're going to do 6 inches in the fall. There were nearly 1,400 people in the meeting last night talking about a controversial proposal. Those who live south and southeast of Lake Conroe, as far as Kingwood, want the lake lowered so their homes don't flood. We really would support anything that they would come up with if it would help prevent the flooding. When uh, they release the water uh, from the lake, our community always floods. And we have many lives that are in danger. Of course, folks who live on the lake are generally against lowering the water level for quality of life purposes. But that's why the River Authority decided to lower it in two stages. Time right now is 436 this morning. This morning we have learned that an Alvin ISD staff member is no longer working for the district. This all comes after being accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. This happened at Alvin High School. The district says a paraprofessional resigned on Wednesday right in the middle of the investigation into those allegations. In a statement, Alvin ISD says in part at this time, the investigation has been turned over to law enforcement and all appropriate parties have been notified. Nevada Democrats make their choice for the Democratic presidential nominee this weekend. That is right, but questions still remain about whether the state can avoid a repeat of the debacle in Iowa. Nevada officials say they are taking major steps to make sure something like that does not happen ahead of Saturday's caucuses. Democrats scrambling to train caucus volunteers, having added 55 additional training sessions. Volunteers can also now try out the much talked about caucus calculator. It will have preloaded early vote information combined with the choices of the people who will be out there on Saturday. 
but there are some concerns about the massive number of early votes, which could impact, could complicate the tally process. One is we still don't know any details of the back office, of how all the early votes were tabulated, how this tool works. Second of all, there's a massive shortage of volunteers. The Nevada Democratic Party says nearly 75,000 participated in the first ever early caucusing, nearly the total number of voters in the 2016 caucus, when roughly 84,000 people participated on caucus day. The chair of the Democratic National Committee maintains that he believes everything will be smooth sailing come Saturday. Sunday on Houston Newsmakers with our Cambrell Marshall, Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia says despite the outcome, the impeachment of President Trump was appropriate and that the Founding Fathers prepared us for it. Their worst fear was someone like Donald Trump. That's why the impeachment clause was put in there, so that if we had a president who has done the things that this president has done, that we would have a way to remove him from office. Congressman Kevin Brady, you might imagine, has a very different opinion about it. We're going to hear both sides and where we go from here. Canberra Marshall, always trying to find balance I on know. Houston Newsmakers, Sunday morning at 1030. Well, the Rockets came out on top, recharged after that all-star break in last night's game against the Warriors. The fireworks came toward the end of the game. They're coming up how James Harden feels about uh, Westbrook getting ejected in the fourth quarter. Ooh. Got run last night out there in Golden State, that's for sure. Chilly morning drive. Make sure you're bundled up. We'll show you just how chilly we'll get before sunrise is back and sunshine's back for your afternoon. Well, watch that little patchy frost tomorrow morning. We'll have your full weekend forecast coming up here in just a bit. It's just before 4.40. Good morning. The Rockets and Golden State Warriors met up for the first game since the NBA All-Star break. And of course, there were some fireworks. Like July 4th. <laughs> uh, uh, it was all Rockets from the start. The Warriors couldn't keep up, uh, even with newcomers on the court like Robert Covington, Jeff Green, and Damari Carroll. Team played like a well-oiled machine, but into the fourth quarter, Russell Westbrook elbowed Golden State's Damian Lee. Then he started arguing with players on the Warriors bench. That got Westbrook his second t technical foul of the game, which results in the ejection. After that, uh, after the game, uh, Russell Westbrook said he thinks he was treated unfairly by the officials. And when asked about it, James Harden says he thinks Westbrook did what he had to do. He showed his anger, you know, and, and as any player, they felt like they got fouled uh, numerous of times and it wasn't even called. They you know, showed they expressed their emotion. So, um, I mean, everybody knows how he played and his emotion and, um, you know, he did what he had to do. Yeah, this is no scandal, folks. Uh, Rockets went on to win 135-105. It's off to Utah tomorrow to take on the Jazz. Big changes could be coming to the NFL regular season, the postseason, if the league owners uh, can work out an agreement with the players' union. Coming up, what J.J. Watt is saying that could spell trouble for the negotiations. Good morning. Time right now is 445 on a Friday. Live look outside, 42 degrees right now. Justin will have your full forecast coming up in just a few moments. And Eric is tracking our roadways this morning. He will have a full traffic report coming up in just a few moments, but you can always head to our website, click to Houston.com slash traffic and check out our new traffic page. It's called What's Driving Houston. And on it, you will find up to the minute looks at your drive times. The NFL Players Union and uh, the league owners are currently trying to work out a new collective bargaining agreement. J.J. Watt uh, doesn't like some of what's in it, and that could spell trouble for negotiations. Here's sports director Randy McElvoy. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Xfinity Sports Desk. Here's what's happening. Astros' first week as a full squad just about over before games start on Saturday there in West Palm Beach. Another day of work yesterday, and each day it's a learning experience for Astros' new manager, Dusty Baker. He's making it a point now to get to know everybody in camp and meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Yesterday, he talked about the competition for the few spots left on this roster. I like competition all the way towards the end of the spring because, like, what happens is some guys elevate and some guys deflate. And, and if you can't handle competition from within for a job, how are you going to handle competition against the opposition? Number five to shoot. Mills feeling it. Oh, yes, of course he hit it. 
Yeah, one man show a couple nights ago. Freshman CJ Mills, the UH, uh, poured in 17 of his 27 in that blowout win over Tulsa. Got the Kooks to 11 and 3 in the AAC. They're number one right now. They're going to hit the road, though. Big one tomorrow against 18 and 8 Memphis, 1 o'clock. Kelvin Sampson on the road mentality improving for the Kooks. Every game is wrought with its own challenges. You know, there's not a team in this league that can't beat us, and there's not a team in this league that we can't beat. But, you know, we, we need to bounce back and have a good road performance. All right, quick stop. Some girls' high school hoops playoff action last night. Third round at the Merrill Center in Katy. 36-0 side Creek and Dulles. Cougars go inside. That's Taylor Jackson for the bucket. And then check out the steal. Kendall Hunter and the finish. Side Creek rolls, and they are now on to the next round. One step closer to getting that state tournament. All right, the NFL released a statement yesterday saying both the league and the players' union have agreed upon terms of a new collective par bargaining agreement. If approved now, reports say the regular season could expand to 17 games preseason reduced to only three games this season playoff field would increase from 12 to 14 teams and only one team in each conference would earn a first round by the full players union must now ratify the new CBA before it could take effect Texan star JJ Watt went on Twitter last night and said he is not in favor of this Rockets are off tonight road trip continues at Utah big one against the Jazz coming up tomorrow night reminder to follow me on Facebook Twitter and Instagram at KPR RC2 Randy McAvoy. Have a great day and we'll see you tonight. Thank you, Randy. Time now, 448. Top stories around the nation. Roger Stone has been sentenced to 40 months in prison, which is a shorter sentence than prosecutors originally requested. Now many are asking, will the president get involved? President Trump says he does not plan to offer him a pardon, even though he believes Stone deserves one. I want the process to play out. I think that's the best thing to do. Because I'd love to see Roger exonerated, and I'd love to see it happen, because I personally think he was treated very unfairly. But he's not closing the door on the possibility of a pardon. Presidential advisors tell CNN they expect the president to eventually settle it if Stone's conviction is not overturned. Coronavirus infected patients have been rushed into isolation in Washington state. They were all under quarantine at Travis Air Force Base in Colorado. This comes as quarantine uh, evacuees, hundreds of them, uh, at bases around the country are being released back into the public. The Centers for Disease Control is warning travelers to take serious precautions. In Japan, where uh, hundreds of passengers are leaving the Diamond Princess cruise ship, this morning concerns grow that they could be carrying the disease after reports that the quarantine process on the ship was inadequate. A winter storm warning is in effect for parts of North Carolina and Virginia. Communities in the eastern part of the North Carolina are expected to see more snowfall this morning. The current winter weather has already knocked out power to more than 24,000 customers. And up to four inches of snow is expected in parts of Virginia over the next few days. Officials there are warning people to stay safe during this winter storm. It's already begun snowing in certain parts of Virginia Beach. Mm, no thanks. No. Nope, we're good. I have nice. friends in North Carolina still in the air getting. I was going to say, that's no snow. joke you get out towards Virginia Beach. Obviously, if you're in the mountains of Virginia, I mean, they get snow all the time. The Appalachians are used to that. But yeah, Virginia Beach, it's like Galveston. Mm -hmm. You don't get snow there that often. So <laughs> yeah, I'd be. Oof. No beach day. No, no beach day. Well, and I'll tell you what, this morning's probably not where you want to be if you're going to try to run on the seawall because one, you're going to be fighting a real stiff north wind. I mean, like, 30 mile an hour wind still down Whoa. on the island right now. Yeah, it's cranking. Uh, we got a wind advisory till 6 a.m. So at least for the next hour, I would not be shocked for them to see uh, if they extend that for at least a good chunk of our morning because I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of change, at least in the wind for a bit. However, should see some improvement though in terms of that sunshine category. Right now, we've got clear skies basically from the north side as you get into downtown southwest here at Channel 2 and we're looking down in Galveston, 46 degrees. Everybody else sitting in between the mid to low 40s. Upper 30s as you get towards Conroe, Huntsville, Bryan College Station, also at 38 degrees. We're going to be even colder as we get towards tomorrow morning, and that's because that cold air continues to move on in. You want to talk about cold? Look at this. It is 17 degrees up in Amarillo right now. Low 20s in Lubbock, 18, <coughs> excuse me, as you get towards Oklahoma City. 
just above freezing in Dallas and low 40s as we mentioned for us here locally. Even Brownsville down in South Texas, they're below 50 degrees as well. So 31 mile an hour winds on the island right now. Uh, still looking at the winds somewhat elevated from Hobby down to Pearland and Angleton in the teens. Everybody else though starting to slowly relax and I do expect the winds to back off some as we get into this afternoon. But a 40 mile an hour wind gust down in Galveston right now. So that is no joke. And obviously that's going to make it feel a lot colder than it is. And there's that wind advisory. It extends basically up the ship channel for the bay, down offshore to the island, and all along the south coast through 6 a.m. Would not shock to see that extended, where they could see the wind gusts, as we've mentioned already so far, over 30 miles an hour. And the seas right now will be anywhere from about 6, 7 to 10 feet. So real choppy as you get out on the... Uh, Island as well. So this is what tonight I was talking about as you get over towards Virginia. That's where they're seeing some leftover snow. That system is continuing to push off the East Coast, thankfully, but the cold air is moving in behind that. And in fact, everybody from the Ohio Valley over towards the East Coast getting a little taste of winter, which we're getting here as well. So as we head into this afternoon, though, with the sunshine, should be able to warm things up into the mid 50s. But that north wind is really going to put a little bit of a bite. And especially tonight, if you're going out or tomorrow morning, we could be talking widespread mid to upper 30s and even some spots on the north side, Walker County, for example, Huntsville, Livingston areas. You might be dealing with a little bit of patchy frost as you get your Saturday morning started, but it should warm things back up. You see the wind switching just a bit, and that'll get us back up to about 60 degrees. And in fact, we've got a couple of fronts coming through the 10 day forecast here. They're all going to bring a reinforcing shot of some winter conditions. So this weekend should be real nice weather for Galveston. Bundle up if you're headed on down for the Momus Parade. We're going to have it live right here on Channel 2 starting at 6 30, but it will be chilly, likely in the low. 50s and then back into the 70s. That's when the front brings in some rain on Monday, a reinforcing shot of that cool air as we get in towards Ash Wednesday. And then, yeah, as we always expect, guys, you get in towards cookoff. That's kind of what you see as well, right? We're always expecting at least one or two of those days as we get ready to uh, kick off rodeo season here where the temperatures are going to be on the chilly side, Eric. And it looks like at least it'll be dry, but it is going to be cold by next weekend as well. All right, Justin, thank you very much. Time save for traffic now. Still dealing with the hazmat spill. This is not on the main lanes, but on the feeder road, North Freeway southbound at Springs. Stubner. You can see the flashing lights here in the distance on our inset here, but the inbound side of things is still looking good, so not a huge issue with this particular hazmat spill that they continue to clean up. 288 at airport is, uh, yeah, looking pretty good overall. A few cars out there, but moving along at posted speeds later on this morning, it will not be looking so good. East Freeway, Mercury, same story, very light traffic. We've got dry roadways, we've got good visibility, so the morning drive is shaping up to be pretty good out there. 24 minutes in from the woodlands on the North Freeway. If you're coming in from Baytown, 16 minutes uh, on I-10. And as always, you can get this traffic wheel at clicktohouston.com slash traffic anytime you need it. Back to you. Thank you, Eric. Here's a look at what's trending this Friday. McDonald's really wants your house to smell like its iconic quarter pounder with cheese. So check this out. They put it in a candle, six candles to be exact. The quarter pounder scented pack features the bun, the ketchup, the pickle, the cheese, the onion, and of course the beef in these votive candles. You can burn them individually or all at once <laughs> for the ultimate experience. Enjoy. <laughs> all right, this is the second weekend for Mardi Gras uh, in Galveston. It's also the biggest one. Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow, one of the main parades goes down the Strand. Hundreds of beads have already been loaded into the floats. You can see them here, all getting ready for tomorrow's Knights of Momus Grand Night Parade. Coming up later this morning, our Amy Davis joins us live from Galveston to give us a look at the preparations for that parade. That starts in our 5 a.m. hour, and KPRC will be playing a huge role in the celebration this weekend. We will be broadcasting that parade live this Saturday night. We will bring you all of the floats, talented bands as well, well, that all starts at 6.30 p.m. Wait till you see uh, all of our boas and cool I know, stuff say, we've got later this morning. We've got some good stuff up here. you got a match, too. I know. We'll Dress for the works. occasion. All right, a new procedure could be a game changer for folks at risk of esophageal cancer. Coming up at 5, Haley Hernandez takes a look at a new test, which is less invasive and takes less than 10 minutes. A month. 457. By now, it seems like everyone's thrown out their opinion on the Astro sign stealing scandal. Well, guess what? There's one more. There is coming up why Big Poppy is directing his criticism to the players that blew the whistle. NTB. Live.
From KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Uh, breaking news overnight, a man and woman found murdered in Texas City. Police are still at the scene the, at this hour after the gunman was chased down on the Gulf Freeway. But what they found after the truck crashed. Drivers headed from the Woodlands and Spring, you need to listen up this morning. A big rig rolled over just off the freeway. What it was carrying as crews are working to clean it up. Uh, we got a little trouble weather-wise, uh, cold, and it's going to stay that way, but well, we might see a little frost uh, in the uh, outlook. Good morning to you. It is Friday at 5 o'clock. I'm Owen Conflict. We made it. Good morning. <laughs> I'm Tanaya Wright. It's February 21st, already the 21st. All right, Eric is in with a look at the roads. How are yes. we looking? Uh, we've got that hazmat spill, uh, the overturned semi up uh, mm. toward the spring area. Fortunately, no main lanes blocked on that, and elsewhere we're looking good. The weather is fine today, so mm. we don't have any wet roadways like we have had earlier this week. Uh, so things are looking good. Over. No sheen on the roads. No, no, sheen, no sheen on, on the roads. That's word of the week. We, we seen enough of that yesterday. <laughs> that was dynamite. When I saw it, I was like, sheen? Uh, what is sheen? A, a little that. sheen. That's right. A little, a little, just a little sheen. sheen. Just a little tiny today. as well. If you don't know what that is, TikTok Owen there, and you'll find yep. out what the sheen is. So, uh, Let's head outside and show you what we've got. As Eric mentioned, the weather's not going to be an issue this morning. It is chilly, though. Make sure you're ready for that. And in fact, this is a live look from here at Channel 2. We're looking A-OK -okay so far, but it is going to be on the cool side. 41 at Bush, 41 as you get towards Sugarland, and look at this. How about a 30 mile an hour wind down in Galveston, where they're in the mid 40s, and the wind gusts down on the island are about 40s. They're clocking in some pretty stiff wind right now. We've got upper 30s from Bryan College Station out to LaGrange. Columbus is at 37 as well. So that frost that we were hinting at, that's going to be for tomorrow morning. I'll kind of show you why that sets up here in just a bit. But uh, the winds, aside from the coast, are backing off, thankfully. So it's not as breezy as it was yesterday. The exact track's got mostly cloud cover sitting just offshore. So as we get into this afternoon, that big orange orb will be back in the sky. We like to call it the sun, and that should warm things back into the mid-50s this afternoon, but definitely need a jacket later this evening as well. Eric, if you headed on out, we'll talk more about that. And of course, uh, get you updated on your weekend forecast. All right, very good. Love that sunshine on that day planner. It's a good thing. All right, traffic map right now is green. We are crash free with the exception of our hazmat spill. Again, this is on the north side of town, right around the spring area, southbound uh, frontage road lanes. Um, are being impacted on this one. Not main lanes, as you can see in the inset here. The main lanes are getting by here in the foreground, so not a huge issue. Uh, but if you do use the frontage road lanes in this particular area, you will need to keep your heads up and kind of get around it. Use side streets to get around it. All right, Southwest Freeway, Lancashire, you notice the 610 loop interchange is in the background right here. This is going to be closed down 9 p.m. tonight until 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, and that's a nightly closure until March 2nd, so be aware of that. Uh, if you're not aware of that, chances are you don't really take that part of town, uh, the roads in that part of town, that often. All right, here's your traffic wheel. We are moving along at posted speeds on all major arteries. You can get this information anytime you want. Click to Houston.com slash traffic. Back to you. Thank you, Eric. More on that breaking news. Eric has been following out of North Harris County. That's where a look at this rolled over big rig causing traffic nightmares for people on the roads this morning. This happened at Spring Stubner and the North Freeway. Investigators say the truck tried to take the North Freeway U-turn on the feeder road when it flipped over on its side. You can see stuff spilled out all over the place. Harris County Hazmat has been called out to the scene for hydraulic fluid leak there. Fortunately, no one was hurt. 503. Now to some breaking news that we have been following for you all night long. Three people dead after a shooting in Texas City. Yeah, police say one of those dead is the suspected shooter who took his own life after running from police. So this all started last night at the Green Villa Mobile Home Park community off FM 3436 near FM 517. It ended in a crash on the Gulf Freeway near Bay Area Boulevard hours later. So here's a, a shot from earlier from the scene. Police say where the shooting took place. Investigators are still there where they found a 39-year-old man dead in a trailer and a 45-year-old victim shot in the back room. This all unfolded around 8.30 last night. Police say they, they went to the suspect's home uh, later in Dickinson. And that's when he took off, leading officers down the Gulf Freeway through League City before crashing into a retaining wall there. He was found dead inside of his car. Police say he died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So far, no motive for this shooting has been released. The victims have also not been identified. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli is at the scene right now where that man and woman were found dead. We will have a live report from him coming up at 5.30. To lower it or not, 
That is the question that the San Jacinto River Authority had to answer when it came to Lake Conroe's water level. Yeah, they had a packed house in a meeting last night, almost 1,400 people. And the meeting went late into the night. Our Sophia Ojeda is joining us live with the decision. Good morning. Good morning. The San Jacinto River Authority did vote to lower the lake last night. Several people who live and work around the lake tell Channel 2 that they are worried. They are worried for their homes. They said this is a major concern that how the lowering of the lake could affect their neighborhoods and the future of their families. Now, San Jacinto River Authority uh, Board of Direc Directors held a special meeting last night. More than 1,400 residents came to the Lone Star Convention and Expo Center to hear if the board would vote to recommend lowering Lake Conroe. According to the River Authority, lowering the lake one foot in the spring and two feet in the fall will help provide flood mitigation for those downstream. It would increase the lake's capacity to catch more rainfall and runoff. But some people we spoke with say this is just not a good idea. The river and the lake don't hold the water that they used to, and it's because they say the government didn't do a good job. They allowed sand mining operations to operate in the floodplain, which other states don't do, which allows sand to leach into the river so that parts of the uh, Lake Houston you can walk ankle deep in and parts of the river are just so shallow so the river and the lake don't hold the water they used to. The problem has been the government in action. Now I feel like we have to lower the lakes in both Houston and in Conroe to give them time to fix the mess they created. Now, the recommendation is to lower the lake one foot in the spring, two feet in the fall. But depending on any kind of drought or hurricane situations, that could be adjusted. This program is expected to continue until December of 2022. Reporting live in Conroe, Sophia Ojeda, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Sophia. An Alvin ISD staff member is off the job this morning, accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. This happened at Alvin High School. According to the district, a paraprofessional employee at that school resigned on Wednesday during a district's investigation into those allegations. In a statement, Alvin ISD said, quote, at this time, the investigation has been turned over to law enforcement and all appropriate parties have been notified. Well, new this morning, firefighters are working to learn what started a fire out in Channel View. The home was pretty badly damaged, uh, but thankfully no one was there at the time. It started around 1120 last night, Rio Villa Drive. Firefighters say the fire was coming from an attached storage area where an elevator shaft was. They were able to knock down the fire pretty quickly. That elevator shaft, they said, kept the flames from spreading above uh, into the building. A West Houston apartment complex goes up in flames, and luckily, residents stepped in to help and get their neighbors to safety. This all happened at the complex just off Westheimer in Westerlin just before 6 o'clock last night. Neighbors going door to door to warn others about the danger. Within minutes, dozens of firefighters were on the scene to help put out those flames. I just started coughing and stuff. I turned around and seen a bunch of smoke. And just my, my feelings started pumping. I started running. So I see the lady, my neighbor on the balcony, all this stuff. She just pulling everybody back to the I'm glad everybody's safe. And everybody goes real, real neighborly. We look out for each other. They believe that fire started in a kitchen. One apartment was destroyed. Several others suffered a lot of damage. Thankfully, firefighters say no one was hurt. Families in one Katy area neighborhood are concerned after home surveillance cameras caught a pack of coyotes roaming the streets late at night. And now they're worried uh, the animals are after their pets uh, after one of their cats was killed in the neighborhood. Uh, this neighborhood's just south of the, the Katy Freeway near Fry Road. Harris County Animal Control says residents need to hire a trapper to catch the coyotes. And officers then could come and remove the animals and then return them to a safe habitat. Authorities in Hawaii have arrested the 47-year-old woman at the center of an investigation into her two missing children who have not been seen since September. The Kauai Police Department arrested Lori Vallow of Idaho on Thursday. Vallow did not comply with a court order to produce her children to authorities on January 30th. She has been charged with two felony counts of desertion and non-support of dependent children. 509 now to decision 2020. Democrats in Nevada are getting ready for the caucuses tomorrow. Altogether, 48 delegates are up for grabs. Uh, right now, it's a pretty tight race based on the polling. Um, Biden, Sanders, and Warren are all around 20%.
State's been consistently blue for almost 20 years. In 2016, Hillary Clinton won the general election over President Trump. Okay, most of us have already dropped our New Year's resolutions. Not this guy right here, though. Not you. Uh -uh. You are going strong. Oh, ma'am. But not this dog either. Oh. Still ahead at five, how much weight Bailey, the therapy pup, has already lost. He's a good boy. Yeah, he's now. looking good on there, huh? Getting it going this morning. Well, I'll tell you, if you're going to go out and get some uh, hit the pavement this morning, you better bundle up. Make sure you got the thermals because it's chilly out there. We've got temperatures in the low 40s and 30s, but should see some nice sunshine this afternoon. Will it last into our weekend forecast? I'll have that coming up. It's 510. Hey, good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Did you miss me? I'm back. It's 5, 12 in the morning. I know you did, Owen. He's over these nine paying attention, right? Not even paying attention right now. 41 up at Bush. We've got 46 down in Galveston. Everybody kind of sandwiched in between there in the low 40s. And boy, oh boy, it is windy out there, especially down on the island. We've got upper 30s up near College Station, Navasota, Brenham, Huntsville, and Conroe, all sitting between 37 to 39. And look at the winds. 30 mile an hour winds in Galveston. That's going to make it feel a little colder. I'll let you know as we go in towards this afternoon what we're talking about for that and of course a peek at your Mardi Gras forecast this weekend guys I'm actually reading more about the Lake Conroe decision thank you very much uh, remember you can track traffic developments anytime we'll get to Eric in a little bit we've got our new traffic page up at click to Houston.com slash traffic what's driving Houston all the real-time conditions great traffic updates and traffic stories as well it's all there at the new website we have got it all well it's a cold morning here in Houston but we're not going to see any snow coming up parts of the country that are waking up to it 513 right now. 5.15 right now. We are not the only Southerners experiencing some chilly weather. This cold making its way across the southeast, impacting several states, including North Carolina. Several winter weather advisories are in, and warnings are currently in effect there. Snow is expected to fall into the early morning hours in the area right near the state's capital. More than 23,000 residents are without power. Close call on the runway in Daytona, Florida. A private jet touched down without the landing gear. Authorities say it was a twin engine private Cessna. Finally came to a stop and the two people on board walked out, no injuries. The runway though was shut down for a little bit uh, so they could do a full inspection. Investigators are now looking into why the jet couldn't get the landing gear down. Uh, maybe it was a malfunction or something. They'll figure that out tonight. Yes, we will. Well, a really terrifying scene on an interstate in Indiana when a semi-truck driver lost control, crashes, and you can see that truck burst into flames. A woman who was driving under the overpass caught the explosion, as you saw on camera. Investigators say the semi was hauling 40,000 gallons of jet fuel. Three Good Samaritans pulled that driver to safety. Investigators say the man's clothes were on fire as he emerged from that truck. That man was rushed to the hospital after suffering serious burns from that accident. Time right now is 5.17 this morning. The New York Times is now out with a report that Russia is working to help get President Trump reelected. Now that news, just hours after his longtime friend and political advisor Roger Stone was sentenced for hindering the probe into the Russia into Russia interference in the 2016 election, NBC Susan McGinnis has more. Tanaya, it appears Russia is at it again. Intelligence officials reportedly briefed House lawmakers a week ago about Russia's plans to interfere in the upcoming election and also targeting the Democratic primaries. According to the New York Times, Russia is again at work to help President Trump get reelected. Multiple sources tell the Times intelligence officials warned House lawmakers last week of Russia's operation. The briefing reportedly angering the president so much he fired his acting director of national intelligence. When Trump heard about that, he hit the roof, screamed at Joe McGuire, according to my source, um, and that spelled the end of Joe McGuire's candidacy. Former CIA Director John Brennan tweeting, we are now in a full-blown national security crisis. You did. You and your, did. You and your you campaign. As the race for the Democratic presidential nomination reaches a fever pitch, Russia is also said to be working to influence the Democratic primaries. One more worry for candidates battling for the nomination, with Nevada's caucus is tomorrow and Super Tuesday next month. President Trump last night mocking Democratic candidates. Now, Mike didn't do too well. He went way down. How about Klobuchar? Did you see her? She choked. The president also defending longtime friend and advisor Roger Stone, sentenced on Thursday to more than three years in prison for hindering the investigation into Russian interference in the last election. How can you have a jury pool tainted so badly? 
It's not fair. It's not fair. And you know, it's not happening to a lot of other people. The president, after handing out pardons and commutations to nearly a dozen high-profile criminals, not ruling out a pardon for Stone. President Trump says he will soon nominate a new candidate for director of national intelligence. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, KPRC, Channel 2 News. It's 519. Today, New Orleans Hotel hosts its annual tradition to deter folks from shimmying up the building's support poles during Mardi Gras, known as the greasing of the poles. For the 50th year, the Royal Sinesta Hotel will hold a competition to see how creative people could be uh, greasing those poles. <laughs> Last year, a woman who used uh, tiny puppet hands took home the top prize. Speaking of Mardi Gras fun, if you want to catch some beads this weekend, uh, look no further than Galveston. That is right. The Knights of Momus Parade kicks off tomorrow. It is a tradition in Galveston that dates back to 1871. Channel 2's Amy Davis is at the Mardi Gras float barn, and she's going to bring us a live look at what we can expect this weekend coming up at 550. And of course, don't forget, KPRC will broadcast the Knights of Momus Grand Night Parade live tomorrow night. You will be able to see all of the amazing floats and talented bands roll through Galveston. This all kicks off at 6.30 p.m. And oh I God, can see the feathers are flying right yeah. now. We are ready Something. for the big celebration. You got a lint roller over there? I know. I'm going to have feathers <laughs> all in my hair. It's exciting, though. We're good, though. Uh, no, Stapleton's we're here ready. Our Mardi Gras weather. That's your color, darling. <laughs> you look good. Oh, that's great. Is it you or is it Memorex? <laughs> <laughs> for the old, that's for all us old kids out there. Everyone, huh? huh? So Memorex. Old. Look it up. So old. I am Heather's old. That's all right. We both. We both are. That's how it works. Anyway, check it out, gang. We've got a uh, chilly start this morning. We're looking at upper 30s. Navasota, Brenham, Conroe, Cleveland, all sitting at 39 degrees. About 40 as you get to Katy. A little warmer than that down in Galveston. But here's the here's the rub on that. The wind in Galveston right now is clocking in at about 30 miles an hour. So the wind advisory goes until 6 o'clock, and I bet they'll expand that. Teens up towards Amarillo and Oklahoma City, 26 in Little Rock, and right now sitting in Dallas, it's about 32 degrees. A very chilly start. And there's that wind down on the island. Everybody else, with the exception of Hobby, still at about 16, 15, 14 mile an hour winds. Everybody is slowly relaxing those off, and that should help. But still, some wind gusts closer to 40 miles an hour as you're working on the seawall this morning. And that's why that wind advisory is out. Notice that that's basically from the bay up to the ship channel and then down to the south coast. Seas also 6 to 7 to 10 feet, so very choppy water with that strong north wind pushing offshore as well. Across the country, it's actually fairly quiet out there. Not much happening. And look at this little bit of light snow over towards the uh South Coast out towards Wilmington, North Carolina. They do not see quick snowbursts like that out on the uh, islands there uh, very often. So interesting to see that they are getting a little taste of winter as well. For t this afternoon, we should get up into the mid 50s, but it is going to be a cold start to tomorrow morning. We'll see widespread mid upper 30s, even a little bit of light patchy frost as you get towards your Saturday morning. And then as we get into the afternoon, nice looking forecast there as well. And in fact, we're going to warm it up even nicer as we get in towards Sunday around 68 degrees. And as Ona and I mentioned, of course, the moment's parade is going to be live right here at channel 2 6 30 tomorrow night should be a great night for that but bundle up for sure and then we'll see another front come through eric on monday that's going to kick us back into the 50s as we get ready for a look at that a little rodeo cook-off on the 10-day forecast all right very good justin thank you very much typical winter forecast up and down with the temperatures in and out the rain uh yeah today's sunshine we like it that means dry roadways out there for your morning drive we are crash free with the exception of this one semi-truck that rolled over early this morning sometime after three o'clock uh, yes, yeah, spill this load, hazmat spill, cleanup continues. You can see the flashing lights here. This is on a feeder road southbound on 45, the North Freeway, right at Spring Stubner. Main lane's getting by, no problems whatsoever, so not causing a huge issue as far as the morning drive it goes. Gulf Freeway at Scarsdale flowing nicely out there right now, 288 at airport. Same story, traffic very light, moving along at posted speeds only 11 minutes in from the Pearland area. So yeah, enjoy that ride while it does last. It's going to get worse after 6 o'clock this morning. We continue to move along at posted speeds throughout southeast Texas. Back to you guys. Thank you, Eric. A new Texas police officer is now ready to get to work. This young man sworn in as an honorary officer dedicated to fighting crime and cancer. We'll have more from that ceremony coming up. And I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. There's a sponge that might be able to detect cancer. Coming up, I'll tell you why people with acid reflux need to know about this. And we're back at 526. 
If your willpower to keep that New Year's resolution to lose weight is waning, this might be the inspiration you need. Meet Bailey, a very special therapy dog. Bailey gets lots of love, and most of that love is in the form of treats. And while Bailey loves treats, her waistline does not love those treats. So her owner started 2020 with a goal for Bailey, losing 10 pounds. The five-year-old Labradoodle has already lost three and a half of those pounds in just five weeks. And keep it going. I'm still doing my morning routine every morning at 2.30. I vowed to start this year and never quit till the day I die. So let's all stay with it. All right, this story out of Fort Worth, the police department's welcoming their newest member uh, of the team. It's an officer dedicated to fighting crime and his own rare cancer. It's honorary officer Carter Escobar. This baby boy was welcomed into the Fort Worth Police Department yesterday with all his friends watching this swearing-in ceremony. They checked another item off the nine-year-old's bucket list. Keep him as happy and um, feeling good as possible. Just try to say yes to as much as we can. The fact that a nine-year-old needs a bucket list, though, that's, that hurts. It's just one of the fun things he's gotten to do. He's also been in a Ferrari, he spent the day as a school principal, and even got a shout-out from Shaq. Breaking news from overnight, cases of coronavirus in South Korea are rising. Coming up, how many American evacuees have been released from quarantine in San Antonio? All right, time saver traffic, check it out. This is the East Tex Freeway, Will Clayton Parkway. It is flowing beautifully. We've got dry roadways, and so far your morning commute's going well. We'll take an update on your morning drive times coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right, thank you very much, Eric. Yeah, nice to see the dry weather back. That also means the sunshine will be back as we head towards this afternoon. Chilly start this morning, but how much can we warm up? We're going to find out that in your entire weekend forecast. It's coming up after the break. Stick around. Arts. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Breaking this morning, an investigation that spans three cities. A man and woman found dead inside of their tra this trailer in Texas City. And the suspected gunman is also found dead. Where all of this ended and what we now know about the victims. Well, Russell Westbrook got uh, thrown out of the game last night. He wasn't happy with the Warriors or the refs, and we'll tell you what that was all about. And a cancer-detecting sponge? How a new medical device that you swallow might help detect cancer in the esophagus early. Details are coming up. I'm Amy Davis live in Galveston. We are getting ready for Mardi Gras and the Mardi Gras parade that is tomorrow night. You can watch it right here on Channel 2. And we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look at all of these fantastic floats coming up. That looks amazing. Oh. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. We got our own Mardi Gras here. I, I got <laughs> feathers everywhere. We're trying to lint roll them off. I was going to say, missed. talk about Amy's flair. Huh? I know. Yeah, looking good this morning. She even has more than the 15 that, you know, is required. I know. <laughs> the 15 <laughs> Thank needed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there we go. Day. Come on. I know. It's so, uh, 531, it is a Friday morning. Eric, good morning. Yes. How are we doing out there? Uh, we're doing well. We've got the one hazmat spill affecting yeah. frontage road lanes on the North Freeway. Main lanes, though, are fine. So, you folks coming in from the woodlands, no major issues uh, for you or for anybody else at this hour either. So, That's good. Yeah. Which is good, good there. That's why I was going to see that on a Friday, that's for sure. But it is chilly out there. Here's the good thing. And I was going to wonder where Amy was, if she was inside or outside, because I will show you a picture from uh, the park down near uh, Yaga's, and the wind is howling. Oh, yeah. And Galveston right now, so it is uh, still pretty nasty down there on the island for the most part. Kaplan Science Relief Camera looking into downtown. You can actually see the tops of the skyscrapers, which we have not been able to see the last couple of days because of those low clouds. Not the case today, but it is chilly. As we mentioned, low 40s, Sugarland up towards the airport. How about 29 mile an hour winds? That's sustained winds, mind you, down in Galveston right now in the mid 40s, upper 30s for Bryan College Station, Huntsville, and into Conroe. So a little chilly there up near Lake Livingston as well. Be ready for it. Uh, but these winds are going to be the issue down around the coast. Coast, and I think likely through much of the morning, at least the sun is back today. We should be able to warm things back up into the mid 50s. So a winter crisp day, Eric, but still not bad. Nice to finally get a little dry time for us here. And I'll let you know if we can continue that as we get into our weekend forecast as well. All right. Uh, I like that sunshine on that day planner. It's a good thing, even though it is going to be a little on the cool side. But with sunshine, it means we don't have any clouds. Without clouds, we don't have rain. And without rain, we have dry roadways. So that is a good thing. Southwest Freeway looking fine. As you're coming in from the Grand Parkway, through the Beltway, through the Loop, it's all good. 24 minutes into downtown from the Grand Parkway. 
Yeah, we could definitely be seeing worse conditions. Southwest Freeway, Derry Ashford, you can see it right here. Not many cars on the roadways just yet. 533 in the morning. It's exactly what we might expect. A hazmat spill continues on the feeder road southbound. Spring Stubner on the North Freeway. Main lanes are getting by, so definitely be aware of that if you are uh, a feeder user in this part of Houston. Uh, your current drive times across the board at this hour are looking good. We are moving along at posted speeds north to south, east to west. Back to you. Okay, Eric, thank you. 5.33 now to this breaking news we've been following all night. Uh, police are still at a Texas City uh, mobile home park where a man and woman were found dead. Police tell us that they found the suspected gunman chased after him along the Gulf Freeway, and that suspect crashed out and was found dead. Officers believe he took his own life. Police, though, still gathering evidence at that mobile home park. Channel 2's Vincent Cravelli is there this morning closely following all of this. Vincent, good morning. Tanaya, good morning. Let me break it down. This is where it all started. Take a look behind me. Right now, investigators are focusing their attention on trailer number three. That's where they found the man and woman shot to death. And right now, that's where they're executing a search warrant. Detectives scouring the Greenville Mobile Park in Texas City, searching for clues what led up to this apparent double murder suicide. This is what we know. Gunfire erupted here last night, and when officers arrived, they found a 39-year-old man and a 45-year-old woman dead from gunshot wounds. Minutes later, authorities got a tip about who the suspect was. Dickinson police went to the suspect's home, but the suspect saw them coming and sped off in his truck. There was a high-speed chase going northbound on I-45. The suspect led police on a 10-mile pursuit before crashing into a freeway retaining wall in Webster. Officers swarmed the crash site and discovered the 39-year-old suspect dead inside his truck from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And the investigation here continues. Right now, detectives are trying to figure out what the motive was for this deadly shooting. Why would someone kill two people and then turn the gun on themselves? Reporting live in Texas City, Vincent Cravelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. The viewing for a gospel singer who was killed in a crash last week is set to happen today. The service for Latanya Earl is going to be held at the church at Bethel's family tonight at 5 o'clock. Her remembrance service is happening tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Earl was killed when wet concrete fell from a truck and caused another driver to crash head-on into her vehicle as she was driving down Old Umble Road in Northeast Harris County. She and the other driver died at the scene. 536, uh, the latest now in the heated debate dealing with Lake Conroe's water levels. Uh, the San Jacinto River Authority has voted to continue its seasonal lowering program of the lake. It was a packed house last night, nearly 1,400 people uh, into the meeting. It lasted for hours, too. Uh, folks who live around the lake were generally against lowering the level. Uh, those who live south and southeast of Lake Conroe, downriver, places like Kingwood, they want the lake lowered to help relieve the flooding concerns. Uh, officials plan to lower the lake uh, in Con Lake Conroe, that is, by one foot beginning in April and then another foot in August and another six inches in September. If a named storm enters the area, we're told the city of Houston may initiate an additional pre-release of water from the lake. Over in Conroe, Montgomery County is working to deal with a wild hog invasion. The Precinct 3 Commissioner's Office says a new report, a new effort rather, to remove the nuisance animals has trapped nearly 30 feral hogs near Spring Creek. Uh, that's just in the first month of this three-month program. They trapped 10 males, 17 females. Of the females, most were pregnant. Time right now, 537 over to Decision 2020 this morning. Early caucus voting in Nevada has already begun. Voters in Las Vegas are beating the crowds and getting their votes in now. Nearly 75,000 early ballots were cast as of Wednesday. The state increasingly leans blue, but Hillary Clinton only beat President Trump by just two points there in 2016. The official Nevada cauc caucuses are tomorrow. And as a reminder for Texas voters, early voting is now underway for several statewide races and legislative seats. Voters can cast ballots at any polling location in the county. Early voting ends on February 28th, Election Day is March 3rd. 538 now. Let's go to the latest on the ongoing coronavirus crisis. We've just learned Iran is reporting two more deaths from the virus. The country says now they have 13 confirmed cases. South Korea is dealing with more than 200 cases. Here in Texas, 
The first group of evacuees is no longer in quarantine at Joint, Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. 90 of them were medically cleared and released yesterday. South Korea has declared a special management zone in the city of Daegu to prevent the virus from spreading. Uh, Japan officials, they say two infected passengers who left the formerly quarantined cruise ship there have died. In total, at least 2,200 people have died with more than 76,000 cases worldwide. Time right now is 538 this morning. There is a lot of bad blood after the Astros apologized for their sign-stealing scandal. But in a rare move, Red Sox legend David Ortiz voicing his displeasure with the guy who broke this news. Former Astros pitcher Mike Fires exposed that scheme back in November. Since then, the Astros have been facing scrutiny and many others saying Commissioner Rob Manfred's punishment just wasn't enough. But Big Poppy says he does not think the commissioner should be catching the heat. Here's what he had to say about fires. Oh, after you make your money, after you get your ring, you decide to talk about it? Why don't you talk about it during the season when it was going on? Why, why, why you didn't say, I don't want to be no part of? Oh, now, so you look like a snitch. All eyes will be on the Astros tomorrow during their first spring training game against the Nationals. The last time those teams saw each other was in the World Series. First pitch, 5.05 p.m. All right, so maybe we'll get back to baseball. So, <laughs> point 5.39, now let's check in a little weather and traffic. Stapleton's in for Britta. Good morning. Yeah, brother, would be nice, wouldn't it? Check it, look, look at this live shot over towards uh, Sagerfest Park. I told you, look at this. I mean, it is rocking down there. Yeah, my guess is they're going to be chasing some stuff down in the Strand for a while. The sustained winds are 29 miles an hour right now with 46 degrees. Look at the dew points have dropped into the 30s. So we got a lot of dry air moving in, but it's going to get really chilly as we head in towards late tonight and tomorrow. Right now it's cold out too, upper 30s to low to mid 40s. But the sunshine as it's back this afternoon should produce a real nice looking day today. So we'll keep the jackets and the long pants this morning for class. And as you head on out the door this afternoon, Afternoon, call it mid 50s. Not too bad, guys. We'll get into more of that. And of course, your Mardi Gras forecast here in just a bit. All right. All right. Thank you, Justin. Well, break out your green and purple. You can have this for uh, $9. There's a price tag on it. Actually. Oh, is that what this cost? <laughs> and the feathers are flying. Better be more careful. <laughs> I know. Uh, it is Mardi Gras season. Amy is out in Galva. She's not right there. They should get put her near the heater. Uh, <laughs> she went inside to a heater, but then we'll have her come outside here in a few minutes. So just stand by. It'll be fun. I it promise. will be fun. And next, the Rockets red hot after some R&R &R beating Golden State last night. But Russell Westbrook ended up getting thrown out of the game. a boy. What happened? We'll tell you next. Time right now, 541. I'm mad at him. Time right now is 542. The Utah Jazz are next on the Rockets list after winning in California last night. Yeah, going down, Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> We're State, coming. The Golden State Warriors couldn't catch up last night. Uh, Jeff Green and Damari Carroll on the court. Uh, fourth quarter, though, uh, Carroll's got it going there. Passes to Green, who got the three. But it was the, the moment in that same quarter everybody's talking about. Russell Westbrook started getting frustrated, maybe. I don't know. You don't know why he elbowed Damian Lee in the chest. But that's when Juan Toscano Anderson took the ball from Westbrook, and then they started. Oh, wait, 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 where are you going? Okay. Then he goes over to the bench. Uh, he's talking, he's bumping, and then he gets his second technical foul, which means it's time to go. Rockets end up winning 135 to 105. Yeah, well, the Rockets' next home game will be Monday night against the Knicks. The ooh, first, look at ooh, this 3,000 fans. You know who that is? It's Travis Scott. Oh, That's yeah. a bobblehead. So the first 3,000 people in Toyota Center will get that tip off to that game. Is that seven? Send one over. I'd like to interview him too. Like I, I did know Russell you Westbrook. did the Russell I like Westbrook interviewing one. the bobbleheads. It's well, fun. this. Who does not want free mimosas and brunch snacks? And nobody no, in the no. room has raised their hand. Uh, no. Coming up, <laughs> where you can get some of that in our Freebie Friday report. Haley, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. A capsule is being called a game changer when it comes to detecting a deadly form of cancer. And the new test only takes a few minutes at a doctor's office. Details are coming up. Hey guys, good morning. We are live in Galveston. I've been to a lot of Mardi Gras parades, but I've never been on a float. This is so exciting. We are inside the warehouse with all of the floats for the Knights of Momus Grand Parade coming up. We're going to give you a behind the scenes look coming up. Mardi 
We're back, 546 now. Anyone from babies to seniors can suffer from GERD, the chronic condition that causes that acid reflux and heartburn. But did you know GERD can be an early sign of cancer? Our health reporter Haley Hernandez joins us now with something doctors are using to detect it. Yeah, this is something you won't think. It's really interesting. Actually, this year, 20,000 people will be told they have esophageal cancer. Now, this new way to detect the beginnings of it can be done in just minutes. Take this capsule, put it into your mouth, and then swallow David it. Brown is one of the first people in the U.S. to try out a new test to detect a very dangerous cancer, a cancer that claimed his dad's life. Throughout my childhood, he would be you know, running to the, the restroom and vomiting, and he became jaundiced. That was due to um, a liver metastasis, you know, from the esophageal cancer. And David already struggles with severe heartburn. Just a really bad stomach ache that went on for days. A lot of people live with reflux, live with Barrett's esophagus, live with esophageal cancer, and they just don't know it. Until now, the only way to detect esophageal cancer would be with an endoscopy, where patients are sedated, a flexible camera is fed through the mouth down to the stomach, taking four to five hours. The new cyto sponge takes just seven minutes without sedation. The capsule, the size of a multivitamin, is connected to a string. The patient swallows the capsule. The outer coating dissolves in their stomach, releasing an expandable sponge. The doctor then pulls the string. As we're pulling on the string, the sponge is touching the, the esophageal tissue and collecting cells, and it collects about 500,000 cells. The cells are then analyzed for any signs of cancer. I really do think this is a, a, a game changer for this disease. A game changer encompassed in a tiny capsule. Now, the company says this sponge is best used for patients with a history of swallowing disorders or abnormalities in the esophagus. I looked, and there are fewer than 10 doctors in the entire United States who offer this procedure. I think the closest one to us is probably going to be Arizona, but so far, not yet in Houston. Mm. But maybe something that'll be here. I know. Uh, yeah, if, working the way it yeah, is. if they keep being able to detect this early, I think it would be. So yeah, if the need Makes is sense. that great. Thank you, Haley. 549 here. Let's go to our breaking news alert, an Amber Alert uh, that's been issued for a two-year-old uh, they believe was abducted in San Angelo. Adriana Harding was last seen yesterday evening. Police believe the woman on the right uh, here, Jessica Harding, 31 years old, uh, is the one that took the child. That's what they say. It's not clear the relationship. Obviously, they, they share the last name. It's not clear the relationship between the toddler and the woman. Uh, this is uh, a vehicle. They could be in a 2009 silver Toyota Prius, Texas license plate, JHX9418. If you're heading out and about, to uh, keep this information in the back of your mind. Uh, and anyway, anyone with information is asked to call the San Angelo Police Department. 549 right now. Let's go to Justin with a check on the forecast. Chilly start to our Friday, and it's windy down yes. there near Galveston. Yeah, it really is. So it's kind of adding insult to injury down there tonight. And in fact, uh, we were talking just a second ago about some of these uh, spots, these tents in particular, over towards the park here, <laughs> maybe chasing those down uh, the uh, street because it is really cranky. You can see the wind just whacking the trees and lights and everything. So it is going to be a very brisk morning down on the island. 29 mile an hour winds right now. The humidity at about 60%. Uh, but of course, the feels like temperatures with that north wind feels like it's about 37. So be ready for that. But better weather this afternoon for the San Luis salute and of course the uh, Momus parade, which is going to be live right here on Channel 2 tomorrow night at 630. But likely going to be chilly, though. We'll keep those temperatures in the 50s for a good chunk of the weekend uh, for folks down on the island life there. So upper 30s as you get into Liberty County. Good morning up into Conroe. It is 39 from there up to the Woodlands. 40 in Tomball, 39 out in Katy now. Uh, the wind starting to back off some there, but still just just be very careful. Those wind gusts down on the island, close to 40 miles an hour, clocking in at about 20, 25 as you get towards Hobby Airport. Seas are going to be at least 6, 7 to 10 feet. And of course, that wind advisory that was supposed to expire at 6 o'clock, I bet they'll likely extend that some. Otherwise, the exact track across the rest of the country, fairly quiet out there. So it should be decent weather to do some traveling. Meanwhile, we're going to be looking at temperatures that are going to struggle to get up into the mid 50s today with that strong north wind, but plenty of sunshine. That should help. But that means clear skies and the winds go calm tomorrow morning, everybody starts off in the 30s and even some of the northern counties here, especially up towards the College Station area in the Brazos Valley.
Valley. I bet y'all will see a little bit of light frost and then we'll get back up to about 60 as we get into the afternoon. We've got a second front that's going to come through here on Monday. That'll bring some rain and that'll also kick us from the 70s down to the 60s. A second front shoots in here dry one Tuesday. Now, Eric, that's going to dip us back down into the 50s as we get in towards uh, the first cook-off weekend as we get it to uh, ready to start rodeo season here. But it uh, should be nice sunny weather for that as well. All right, very good. Hard to believe rodeo is already here. Yeah, this year is flying by. Time to traffic. So far, so good on area roadways. We still have officially a hazmat spill that's working on the north side of town. Southwest side of town uh, looking great, though. Inbound from the Sugarland area, we're only looking at 24 minutes. The West Loop at Hempstead. Uh, we've got a stalled vehicle here, so be aware of that. This is on the right shoulder. It's a semi-truck. Just give it an extra lane. Same thing, too, on the Katy Freeway at Wirt Road. We've got a uh, stalled vehicle uh, on the outbound side of things, and folks getting by. We like to see that, giving them a little courtesy uh, as they get that taken care of. Uh, East Loop, we had a stalled vehicle here. It looks like that has been taken care of. Actually, it looks like it's leaving right now off the area roadways. Overall, though, traffic volume is pretty light. We're doing pretty well on area roadways. We do have, again, that hazmat spill on the north side of town, not affecting a main lane. This is just on the feeder road. It is southbound at uh, Spring Stubner Road. Uh, it is still working, but it shouldn't cause too much of a problem for you Woodlands commuters. As far as your drive times go, we are looking good. Traffic volume again continues to be light, and we are in the green across the board. Drive safely out there. Back to you. All right, Eric Brady. Uh, hey, if you couldn't tell, it's time to Mardi Gras. Yeah. Preparations are underway for this year's Knights of Momus Grand Parade. Look at you all Gallus. blinged out. We are ready. And ah. You know who else is ready for this? Our Amy Davis. She is out there so pumped up for Mardi Gras. You have the bling on too, Amy. A lot of it, too. Jeez. I have the bling. You know, it's not too early to get lit, is it? It's almost 6 a.m.? I mean, lit up, like with beads and parade oh, like, floats. Okay. This is the royalty float um, for the Knights of Momus Grand Night Parade. And we are going to be bringing you the parade live on Channel 2. The parade actually starts at 6.30 tomorrow. And this man, we got out of bed at 6.30, this, at 5.30 this morning. You're going to have a busy, busy weekend. Yeah, it's a busy, busy weekend. And you, they already started. So this float is one of 24 you're going to see in the parade. And they came out last night and loaded them all down with essentials, beads. Beads. Yeah. So Lots of beads. Tell Tell us a little bit about this. I mean, all local artists like painted the floats that you guys redid this year. Yes, we redid uh, seven floats this year, all local artists. Um, they've done a wonderful job. I think it's as decorated or decorative and uh, ornate as it's ever been. Uh, we've got lots of great lighting systems on the floats now. It should be a really, really great night. Absolutely. And so Caesar's just kind of showing you around. This is the warehouse where you house them all. I'm so thankful that we're not outside this morning because it's freezing. Um, we are going to show you some more things that will be available if you come out to the parade um, and a special, not just beads, but a hat. Okay. You got your bead throwing arm ready? Right. You've had a lot more practice doing this for at least five years. Okay. Here we go. Happy Mardi Gras. I missed. All right. Owen oh, Tania, back to you. All right. Amy's got the arm out there. Thank happy you, Mardi Amy. Looking good, right? Hey, I don't if, know if you, you say happy Mardi Gras. If you can't make it out the, this weekend. Well, if you are making it out this weekend, you got to bundle up because we've got some temperatures in the 30s and 40s. We'll talk to Justin Stapleton about our weather straight ahead. Yes. I was really upset. I got a $250 ticket uh, for having the wrong stickers on my car. Are you sick and tired of getting pushed around and ripped off by big government and big business? Do not pay empowers me to solve problems that I usually could not easily solve. Now comes a brand new app that promises to put a hard-nosed robot lawyer right there in your pocket. How many services do you offer? We have over 100 different features that help people fight back against corporations and governments from being ripped off. Fight Big bank fees, unwanted robocalls, stand up to your landlord. The app that fights for you, tonight at 10. All right, Amy, as you know, is down in Galveston, but we still got your freebies covered this Friday. We do. How about some free mimosas and free brunch snacks? Those free mimosas and snacks will go to the people who check in and run with the West End Running Club. This group meets weekly at the West End Pub to run anything from eight to six or even two miles. So what better incentive to start running than free snacks? You can meet them this Sunday morning at 930 on Westheimer, right near Sage. Sunday, celebrate National Dog Biscuit Day with free dog treats. You can bring your pup uh, and show them how much you care with the free treats from noon to five at the Palm Information Center for the Wood Forest Subdivision in Montgomery County. And that's open free to everyone.
Get your beads and head on over to Laporte tomorrow. That's where they're holding the sixth annual Mardi Gras on Main celebration. This family friendly event is being held from four until nine. Now there will be food trucks, live music, face painting, and even a craft beer garden. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. This morning, a clash in Conroe. More than a thousand people show up to a meeting to make their opinions heard. What the River Authority wants to do with Lake Conroe, it has some folks up in arms. And there's a chill in the air, and it's one you can probably feel to your bones. But don't worry, changes are coming. We'll tell you when you'll be able to ditch that coat. A day away from a huge celebration, the Knights of Momus Parade, Mardi Gras Parade. We're going to check in with our Amy Davis down in Galveston this morning. Hey, it's Friday, the 21st at 6 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Owen Conflenti. Good morning. I'm Tania Wright. Eric is in with a look at the roads this morning. So how are we looking? Uh, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we've got dry roadways, which is good. The weather is cooperating with the exception of the fact that it's cold. But that doesn't affect your morning drive because you're sitting in a nice heated <laughs> cab. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we are crash-free out there. One hazmat spill, feeder road. Uh, we'll go over that. But overall, looking good. Oh, it is. Mornings like this, you're just like, seat warmers. Click. Click. Yes. That's the best thing out there this morning because it is chilly. I'm going to show you. Uh, speaking of Amy down in Galveston, it is blowing. The wind is rocking down there this morning. I'm going to show you a live look out at uh, Sanger Fest Park here in just a bit. There's our uh, Kaplan Sinus Relief camera looking A-OK. -okay. We can actually see downtown, which we haven't been able to do the last couple of days because the low clouds were just cut off the top of the skyscrapers. 40 at Bush. It's 41 at Sugar Land. Good morning, y'all, down there in Fort Bend County and Galveston's at 45, but that north wind around 24 miles an hour. Hour and look at the wind. I'm gonna step out of the way. Look at the wind just rocking the uh, tents down there so far. So they're gonna be chasing some stuff down the road on the strand. As we mentioned, that wind is going to continue for a good chunk of the morning here. And the wind gusts have been upwards of about 30 to 35 miles an hour. So everybody from the north side in the mid to upper 30s to the low 40s, as we mentioned, jackets for sure this morning, but we're gonna see a lot of sunshine this afternoon. I'll tell you what we've got in store for a Friday afternoon. And of course, we'll also talk about your weekend forecast, Eric, here in just a bit. All right, time saver traffic. Good morning to you. Happy Friday. I hope your day is starting well. Certainly with traffic, things are going pretty smoothly with the exception of our hazmat spill. Uh, this is at Spring Stubner and the feeder southbound on the North Freeway. The main lanes are absolutely fine, so no issues there. We do have a couple of stalled vehicles. This one, 610 West Loop northbound at Hempstead. We've got the semi truck on the right shoulder, not affecting any main lanes. Tomball Parkway, Beltway 8. This is an exit ramp getting onto the Beltway from Tomball Parkway southbound. Again, shoulder incident not affecting the main lane. And so you may need to tap on your brakes as you're going by this, but no real big issue there. Katy Freeway, same story. Shoulder incident outbound on the Katy Freeway. Your outbound drive times looking pretty good, both to, to uh, the Energy Corridor on the Katy Freeway and up toward the Woodlands on the North Freeway. Your inbound drive times look just as good. We continue to move along at posted speeds across the board. You can get this information anytime you want. Traffic wheel at click2houston.com slash traffic. Back to you. Eric, thank you. 602 right now to the big fight up in Congress. And the big decision that was made overnight, the San Jacinto River Authority decided to make the recommendation to lower the level of Lake Conroe. More than a thousand people packed that meeting last night, which went on for several hours, a lot of them arriving by busloads. Channel 2 Sophia Ojeda joins us now live this morning to explain the decision and what's next. Sophia. Good morning, guys. Several people who live around Lake Conroe tell Channel 2 that they don't think this is a good recommendation. They are worried for their homes. Meanwhile, others who live south and southeast of Lake Conroe, as far as Kingwood, say they want the lake lowered so their homes don't flood. More than 1,400 residents packed the San Jacinto River Authority board meeting last night to weigh in on whether Lake Conroe should be lowered. Many say it's a bad idea, not just for flood issues, but for those who access the lake too. It's unsafe to be in Lake Conroe. Uh, there's too many, we have too many kids that go out there and just ski and, and tube, it's unsafe. There's too many people going on the ground. You can look behind my house and there's probably a, um, eight foot area I can get my boat out. I'm not worried about getting my boat out. I'm more worried about my kids and the safety of the kids. 
Others we spoke with say it's a problem with a long history and what they say lack of government help for upkeep and flood mitigation. And the problem is not with the people. The people are all good and have issues and reasons and, and their lives have been disrupted, but it's the government that didn't do their job. Still, the board voted to continue the seasonal lowering program a little bit at a time. The spring lowering will essentially be the same. It's a one foot lowering down to 200 feet MSL in the months of April and May. That's the spring and that's unchanged. For the fall, it's a one foot lowering to 200 MSL in August, the month of August. And in September, it would be lowered by another six inches. If there is a storm that is named or a hurricane situation that we're dealing with, it could be lowered another six inches. Now, the San Jacinto River Authority says this is just a recommendation for the city of Houston. It is up to the city of Houston now to decide what to do. Reporting live in Conroe, Sophia Ojeda, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Sophia. New this morning, a home on still still intact after a fire sparked late last night in Channel View. Firefighters say they found the flames coming from the attached storage area of that home on Rio Villa, where they say it was an elevator shaft was there. Fortunately, crews were able to knock out that fire fairly quickly. As you can see, there was some damage done to the area. Firefighters say that elevator shaft kept those flames from spreading above the structure. Thankfully, no one was home at the time. A quick thinking neighbor yeah, goes jumped, in, jumped into action, right? Went door to door trying to help others get to safety with flames shooting out of this apartment building. This was yesterday evening. Uh, the Diamond Hill Apartments off of Westheimer. Jamil Tainer uh, saw those flames and says he quickly helped his neighbor who was standing outside of her apartment, which was on fire. Tainer says after helping his neighbor, he along with some other residents worked to make sure everybody got out safely. I got a downstairs neighbor out and, and the people to the right of her, but the smoke was so bad, I couldn't get past her apartment. Now, I'm glad everybody's safe because everybody's over here real neighborly. We look out for each other. Uh, dozens of firefighters arrived at the scene within minutes, quickly made the attack on the fire they think started in a kitchen that did destroy a single apartment and damaged a handful of others. But again, thankfully, no one was hurt. Time right now is coming up on 6.06 this morning. 21 cats and kittens are recovering this morning after being rescued from an abandoned apartment with no food or no water. Those animals were found in the Galleria area in a unit right on Winsome Lane near Fountain View. They'd apparently been there for two weeks. Mm. Investigators want to charge whoever abandoned them. Those animals are now being treated by the Houston SPCA. A Massachusetts community is just reeling after the deaths of four family members while on vacation in Florida. Jackson Smith, his sister Scarlett, their mother Julie, and their grandmother Josephine were all killed near Disney World in that crash. A candlelight vigil is being held to remember them tonight. Police say that their van was rear-ended by a driver after they slowed down due to traffic, then rolled over and crashed. Four other family members were inside the van at the time, and, but they survived. The driver accused of hitting them stopped and did cooperate with police, but that person is expected to face charges. The mother of two Idaho children missing since September has been arrested in Hawaii. Lori Vallow has been charged with two counts of desertion and non-support of dependent children. Police say there's no reason to believe Tylee Ryan or her brother Ryan are in Hawaii. But they also really have no idea where they are. Investigators say their mother and her husband, Chad Daybill, have not been cooperating. Daybill has not been arrested yet. A big rig tanker driver is lucky to be alive after Good Samaritans pulled him from a burning truck. Seconds after being pulled away, the truck, which was hauling 4,000 gallons of jet fuel, exploded. The driver was on fire when they rescued him. They sent him to the hospital in critical condition. Investigators think it was a speed issue that caused the truck to roll and again burst into flames. Is Russia trying to take over Decision 2020? Coming up, findings from the Intelligence Institute that sparked some fireworks in Washington. If you have ever been down to Galveston for the Mardi Gras parade, this guy probably looks familiar. This pirate head float is one of the original 1984 floats from the Knights of Momus Grand Night Parade. It's coming up again tomorrow night, and we are airing it on Channel 2. For now, though, a sneak peek inside this warehouse with all these fabulous floats. We've got more for you coming up.
Well, as Amy mentioned, she's getting lit down there at 6 a.m. Why not? It's a Friday. Let's do it. We've got temperatures that are in the upper 30s from Columbus up to Huntsville 40s, and the wind is blowing down on the island. I'll show you that in a bit. But temperatures today should be aided by some sunshine. Nice to see that back in our forecast as well. I'll let you know if it lasts for the entire weekend here. Well, the sunshine means no rain. We've got dry roadways out there. In fact, weather conditions are great for your morning drive. Northwest Freeway, 15-minute ride into the 610 loop. We are delayed for you there. Find out if that is true elsewhere around town. We've got an update on all of your drive times just minutes away. Stay with us. The sur all right, 611 right now. Mardi Gras is almost here. Well, it, it's kind of here. It's and here. Uh, <laughs> the Knights of Momus want you to come celebrate. That's they do. The annual Mardi Gras parade kicks off tomorrow night, but our very own Amy Davis, she is there already this morning. Amy, you have pretty much the best view of the parade, that's for sure. In a hat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, in a hat. It's like a Viking hat because the theme this year is Scandinavia, sailing through Scandinavia. So, you know, you'll see a lot of these props. My little hammer thing here. We've got Rob. I mean, you kind of put all this together. And yeah, that's uh, Thor's hammer. And Thor's. Of the, uh, the, the horned Viking helmet. Um, we've got uh, lots of other little uh, fidget spinners and stuff like that that light up as well. Yeah, lots uh, of things are going to be throwing from these parade floats. We're going to take down, take a few steps down this one. You probably have never even seen these parade floats open, but they have 24 floats in the parade, seven of them this year that they've completely redone, painted by local artists and reconfigured. We showed you one of the ones that has been around since 1984. So it's kind of a really cool tradition for people. It is. It's definitely, uh, it was started back in the 1800s. It died off in the Second World War and was revitalized by uh, George Mitchell uh, in 1984. And uh, there were several other uh, Galveston, they're uh, members of the executive board that kind of uh, oversee the long-term goals of the crew. So. so, I mean, really, it's a lot of fun. I don't know how many people take time to learn about the history of it, but I mean, just looking inside this warehouse, you can see how much work this is and how much effort goes in to putting on such a fantastic weekend and, and a fantastic parade. The beads, everybody's always talking about the beads for Mardi Gras. You guys ordered six 60,000 pounds of beads for the parade tomorrow that will air on Channel 2 at 6.30. So if you're staying at home, get your beads on. Just pretend like you're out here watching. It'll be the best seat in the house. And we'll show it beginning at 6.30. It lasts about an hour and a half long. We are live in Galveston. I'm Amy Davis, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Oh, Where's what my fun. Thor hammer. Yeah, you got it. The kids will be she's, impressed. She's Amy. ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Coming up, Decision 2020 Thanks. hits a Another state. Which state is hoping to hold a far smoother caucus than Iowa earlier this month? Time right now, 613. Uh, good morning, 615. Breaking news from the Middle East. Uh, there's been a reduction of violence promised by the Taliban set to begin tonight. The deal is set to last for seven days and will start a countdown toward a peace agreement set to go into effect at the end of the month. The agreement is set to be signed by uh, February 29th. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says it will pave the way for the withdrawal of U.S. troops and uh, an eventual permanent ceasefire between the United States and the Taliban. Here we go again. It appears Russia is trying to once more tilt the odds of the next election in Donald Trump's favor, President Donald Trump. Now, it's not just the 2020 general election they're after. NBC's Susan McGinnis explains. Well, good morning, Tanaya. That's right. Russia seems to be at it again. Intelligence officials briefed House lawmakers about a week ago about Russia's operation currently targeting the 2020 election to try to get President Trump reelected and a new twist this time around also targeting the Democratic primaries. Now, when President Trump learned about this briefing, he evidently hit the roof, got extremely angry and ended up firing his director of national intelligence, uh, Joe McGuire, and appointed a staunch Trump loyalist, the current ambassador to Germany. Uh, to take his place. Uh, all of this happening as well as the race for the Democratic nomination reaches a fever pitch. Now all of these uh, Democratic candidates have one new worry because the Russians are now also targeting the Democratic process uh, in order to somehow uh, tip the scales in favor of President Trump as well. Uh, one more worry, uh, Tanaya, for the candidates as the caucuses in Nevada are tomorrow and Super Tuesday is coming up soon. 
All right, thank you, Susan, for that live report from Washington, D.C. this morning. 617 this week on Houston Newsmakers with our Cambrell Marshall. Congressman Kevin Brady says the impeachment proceedings have taken a toll along with bipartisan efforts and that uh, Democrats seem to have hurt themselves. Uh, independents especially have really turned away from the Democratic Party. They were just tired of what they saw. They're the ones, I think, that are urging us more than anything. Come together, solve some problems. I'm, I'm eager myself. On uh, the Democrat side, uh, Sylvia Garcia will be on as well this week with uh, Cam Brown to talk about the impeachment Sunday morning at 10.30. And coming up on the Today Show, how safe are your text messages? You might think everything stays locked away in your phone or the app, but one digital privacy agency says it wouldn't be difficult to find out a lot about you if somebody put their mind to it. So with it, what are you able to do to my phone? So with it, we're going to get all of the data from your iCloud backups and see where you've been, who you're calling, um, who you're messaging, and the contents of all your messages, even your WhatsApp messages. Now this morning on today, the one piece of easily obtainable malware that could turn your phone into an open book for criminals. A bit concerning this morning. Well, time now is 6.18. We've got Eric checking on the roads. You've got Justin on weather. Yes, ma'am. Fortunately, it's, uh, the roads are dry this morning. Yeah, roads are dry, and quite honestly, we've had a great Friday more to commute. Happy Friday to you, by the way. Uh, good way to finish up the work week. We don't have any major crashes. Hopefully that continues for the rest of the morning drive. Can't guarantee it, obviously. Right. Yeah. But so far, so good. Yeah, I think it's a little sluggish, too, and it's cold like this. Everybody, mm -hmm. We're kind of like, you know, cold-blooded reptiles. Everyone's like, I don't want to get in a crash this morning because I'm just too cold. You don't want to stand <laughs> out there and wait for the cops, right? So everybody's <laughs> behaving themselves this morning here. I told you. It's Be fun. careful out there. <laughs> anyway, it is, uh, it is a good start to the morning so far, and it uh, should be a nice sunrise, too. And, in fact, uh, there's a live look from right here at Channel 2. Obviously, the inbound lane's starting to get a little more pick-up-and-go as it as well. But here's a live look from our... Kaplan's House, we'll leave Campbell into downtown. Nice little red hue as we get close to sunrise here. So I think we're going to be looking at a nice day today. But it's chilly out there. We've got temperatures that are all sitting in the low 50 or low 40s. That is, excuse me, from Bush to Katy, 43 at Hobby. Galveston right now sitting at about 45 degrees. Here's a live look as you look down towards Sangerfest Park, and that you can see the camera kind of jiggling and look at the wind ripping at these tents down there. It is still clocking in at about 24 miles an hour. Wind gusts are higher than that, closer to about 35 to almost 40. So keep that in mind if you go on. At least we're going to have dry weather for Galveston this weekend for obviously the uh, San Luis salute this evening. Of course, the Momus Parade, as uh, Amy and we've been mentioning, we're going to have that tomorrow night right here at Channel 2 at 630. Should be a nice night for it, but bundle up if you're headed on down there for the festivities this weekend. Upper 30s out in Katy, Navasota, Brenham and Columbus at 36, 41 down in Sugarland. Good morning to you all up towards Conroe. The winds have backed off, but it is still going to be a chilly morning there. And of course, we've got that wind advisory that did let that expire, but if we, the uh, small craft advisory is still offshore as well. The sea is going to be anywhere from around 6 to 10 feet. Keep that in mind. Good news is if you're traveling this weekend, should be A-OK. -okay. We've got a little bit of snow and some light rain over towards the eastern mountains there in Arizona. Huge area of high pressure across the center part of the country is going to blast out anything that tries to get close to us. So I think we should be A-OK, -okay, but that also means that's going to pull in some of that colder air. So thus, we're going to keep the temperatures for today only getting into the mid-50s. And as we get into your weekend, we'll see warming up just a bit. Saturday, Sunday, we'll be back up in towards, let's say, the mid-60s, upper 60s, and that'll be drawn in by this warm front, and this is our next storm system that's going to come through here early next week, so thank God time frame on Monday. Not a big rainmaker, but there's a second one that'll kick in on Tuesday, and that'll reinforce a shot of some colder air. We're going to see another one of these nice Canadian highs drop in, and as it does, we're going to tap into some stuff that's way up there in the upper Midwest. That's where it's in the 20s, teens, and 30s. It's not going to be that cold here, but it is going to give us a a little reinforcing shot of some pretty chilly air. The good news with the 10 day is, is that aside from Monday, other than that, we've got dry skies and a lot of sunshine as well, not only for Fat Tuesday, Ash Wednesday, and then of course, as we mentioned before, rodeo cook-off kicking off next Thursday, Eric. It'll be on the chilly side, but at least it will certainly be dry, better than we've seen in the last couple of years for sure. Yeah, overall, pretty good looking 10 day forecast. Can't complain about that. Can't complain because it's Friday too. Happy Friday to you. Last day of the work week weekend right around the corner and the board of commute so far is going well. Hazmat's
spill on the feeder road at uh, Spring Stubner on the North Freeway. This is inbound. Uh, continues to be worked on, but it's not affecting main lane, so no huge deal there. Tomball Parkway, Beltway 8. This is the exit ramp getting onto the Beltway from the southbound Tomball Parkway. Got the shoulder tied up due to a stalled vehicle. Uh, a little slow getting around it, but not a huge backup there. Elsewhere on the east side of town, 225 at Tidal flowing nicely in both directions right now. Traffic, in fact, very light on 225. Same thing for I-10 at Waco doing some construction, rebuilding the bridge, uh, the Waco Street Bridge over I-10. A little bit sluggish heading into downtown. Overall, your drive times outbound on the east side of town, both on I-10, 225. Looking good, delay-free, and your inbound drive times, here they are across the board. Still looking fine. About a six-minute delay in from Pearland. Slight delays in from Clear Lake on the Gulf Freeway as you're heading into the 610 loop. But uh, yeah, for a Friday, we're looking just fine. You can get this information, traffic wheel, anytime you want. Click to Houston.com slash traffic. Back to you. We like to hear that. Thank you, Eric. Well, do you ever get a craving for just the most unhealthy fast food possible? Totally. Daily. Totally. <laughs> the, uh, the Colonel might have some that's up our alley. I don't know. Let's see what we think about this. Maribel's coming up with it. She's live. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Donuts, fried chicken. How about combining the two? I'll tell you what KFC has planned. That's head live from the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. All right, KFC back at 625. KFC's known for some pretty crazy ideas, but how about this one? Maribel's going to tell you about it. I almost spilled the beans. Uh, plus, we got this. More companies are letting employees uh, off uh, to take part in Decision 2020. Time off to vote. How about it, Maribel? Good morning. Hey, we like time off. Good morning, Owen. Companies from Walmart and Patagonia are giving workers time off to vote in this year's presidential election. Walmart gives employees three hours of paid time to get to the polls, depending on what shifts they work. Patagonia will again close stores and other facilities for the election and pay workers for the day. The two are part of a broader movement by companies to get out the vote. You know, only about 56% of the U.S. voting age population cast a ballot in the 2016 presidential election, according to the Pew Research Center. KFC is rolling out its chicken and donuts offerings nationwide. Among the options is a chicken sandwich made with two warm glazed donuts. You can also get a basket of chicken with donuts. Prices vary from $5.49 to $7.99. They'll be on the menu at KFC this Monday and sold through March 16th or while supplies last. Oh, tonight i mean there's chicken and waffles mm -hmm. that's the thing why not donuts and i can't really speak i had london broil for breakfast this morning <laughs> oh man <that's laughs> nice hey you're when you work these it. hours you uh eat strange things in the morning. Good reason. i'll take it right thanks maribel have a good weekend yes have a good weekend russell westbrook not too happy after last night's game coming up why he got tossed uh, up in the game against the warriors haley's here good morning hey good morning guys the total number of u.s residents with coronavirus has gone up where they're being quarantined coming up and your traffic on this Friday is looking fine. We've got a good morning commute going. 288 is starting to look a little sluggish, but less so than on any other day. We'll take a look at your current drive times from uh, everywhere around the Houston area. It's coming up in just a couple of minutes at the bottom of the hour. It's a little chilly out there, but it's nice to see the old orange hue back in the sky. Sunny skies as we head towards this afternoon, but watch those 40s. They're going to turn into 30s as we head in towards your weekend forecast. I'll have all of that in the 10-day right after the break. 627. It's all. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Good morning. We have uh, breaking news here at 6.30, a double murder in Texas City and the chase for the suspected killer ending with another death. What investigators have learned looking through the night? Plus, a chilly start to our Friday morning. We have made it to the weekend, but it's only getting worse before it gets better. Hey, I'm up here, guys live in Galveston. We are getting you ready ahead of the Knights of Momus Grand Night Parade and Mardi Gras Galveston. A behind the scenes look coming up. She is getting the best behind the scenes. Mm. Good morning, everyone. 631 on a Friday morning. I'm Tanaya Wright. I'm Owen Conflenti. Good morning, Eric Braid. How are we doing out there? We are doing well. We don't have any major crashes. So traffic is moving along nicely. It looks like maybe some people are taking an early weekend because traffic overall is a little bit lighter than usual. And I don't think too many people are complaining about that. I'm mm. sure they're not. Oh gosh, everybody's paying attention to what you said earlier today. Or you, were, you gave the stink eye, didn't you? You were like, don't do it. 
Yeah, make, make my life easier. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I want to build new graphics. Stop. Exactly. <laughs> At that point. So, a uh, little cool out this morning, guys. We've got 40s and even some 30s on the board. And obviously, we've been talking about just how windy it is down in Galveston. But sure is nice to see the old sun back as well. We have not seen that outlook for the sunrise here in the last couple of days. So that's a live look downtown from our Kaplan Science Relief camera. This is what we've got here. Channel 2, as Eric mentioned, we get a little more inbound traffic, but still not bad this morning. So, we'll certainly take it. It is chilly, though. 40 up at Bush. We've got 40 in Sugarland, 45 in Galveston, but here's the big rub, 24 mile an hour winds. And in fact, here's a live look down at the park near Yagas, which is just off to the screen there. And you can see the wind blowing not only the trees around, but of course the uh, tents that have been set up as well. So this morning it is certainly going to be the effect of that. 45 degrees down there right now, but by this afternoon into the weekend, we've got Clear skies should be perfect weather as we head into uh, the second weekend of Mardi Gras. Right now, those winds slowly backing off, but those temperatures, as we mentioned, on the chilly side, even some mid-30s as towards uh, Bryant College Station. But we should see some sunshine and get us into the 50s as we head to this afternoon. There. All right. Thank you very much. Lots of sunshine. We like that, especially after yesterday's gray day. Time tape for traffic. Things looking pretty good out there. We still have the hazmat spill on the feeder road at Spring Stubner. This is on the North Freeway southbound. Main lanes not affected, but they are still cleaning up after a semi truck overturned there. Elsewhere, let's take a look at the Beltway. Actually, this is 249 Tomball Parkway at the Beltway. We have a stalled vehicle on the exit ramp. That has been cleared off, which is good news. A little bit of a backup there, but Overall, things looking better for coming into the uh, city area from Tomball. All right, Gulf Freeway, Broadway. Typically, this starts to get a little bit congested this time in the morning. It's actually flowing more freely than it usually is here at 633 in the morning. Same thing for 288. Uh, usually, it's a parking lot. This time in the morning, it is moving along. Yes, there are some delays, but they aren't as bad as they usually are. So you can, if you're in the Pearland area, you can kind of take it easy this morning. Have a couple of uh, more sips of your coffee before you head out the door. It is an 18-minute drive into downtown from the Pearland area. Drive safely out there. I'll keep you posted as things do change. Thank you, Eric. We are following some breaking news right now out of Northeast Houston. You are looking live from Sky 2. This is the scene of a deadly accident. Police say someone is dead after they were hit by a vehicle. This is all happening now at Lockwood and Tidwell. Right now, all police are saying is that this started as some type of disturbance, and it ended with that person being hit. More breaking news this morning. Police are still out at a Texas City mobile home park after a man and woman were found murdered. Officers say they found the suspected gunman chased him down the Gulf Freeway all the way to Webster. He then crashed and police say they found him with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli is live now at that mobile home park in Texas City. So Vincent, investigators have been there all night. That's right, detectives have been here for over 10 hours investigating this murder scene. The big question, what is the motive? What's the reason behind this suspected double murder suicide? Flashing lights and crime scene tape at the Greenville Mobile Home Park in Texas City. Inside this home, gunfire around 820 last night. Two people died, a 39-year-old man and a 45-year-old woman. Detectives began their investigation and got a tip that the shooter lived in Dickinson. They went to track him down, but the suspect saw officers coming and took off in his truck. After speeding 10 miles, the suspect crashed into a retaining wall in Webster. Officers surrounded the smashed up truck and found the 39-year-old suspect dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And authorities are hoping to wrap up their investigation here within the next hour. Of course, I'll keep you guys updated as this story continues to develop. For now, reporting live in Texas City, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. Now to the latest on an Amber Alert out of San Angelo. Investigators are now on a desperate search for this two-year-old little girl. Police believe Audrina Harding is with 31-year-old Jessica Harding. They were last seen on Thursday night at about 7 o'clock in San Angelo. Investigators say they believe that they could be inside of a 2009 Toyota Prius, the plate number JHX9418. Again, take a look at your screen. This is the vehicle they're looking for. If you see them, call police. Well, this morning, we're getting to hear part of the 911 call from a young father impaled by part of a fence during a crash. Uh, we first showed you this violent crash Tuesday morning. It was breaking news here on the show. 24-year-old Jake Tabor's truck was torn in pieces, leaving little recognizable of it. Uh, the 911 call you're about to hear could be hard to listen to. He's uh, leading first responders to his rescue. 
Yeah. Uh, hey, Dick, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm here. Is that help? There he is. There's someone in there. I can hear him. Don't move, Jake. Save me. Save me, please, that baby. That's good, bud. Just cut me out. Everything's going down. Hurry up. Tabor is still in Conroe Regional Hospital this morning. He's said to be in stable condition with a long way to go on recovery. Family and friends will gather today to remember a beloved Houston area gospel singer who was killed in a tragic crash last week. Viewing for LaTanya Earl is at 5 p.m. at the church at Bethel's family. Her funeral is tomorrow at 10 at that same church. Earl was killed along with another driver when their cars collided due to a concrete spill on Old Umble Road. As of right now, no charges have been filed against a cement truck driver or the company involved, but the family has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the company. 637 now, turning now to decision 2020. Nevada heads to the polls tomorrow for the 2020 Democratic caucuses. It is the first caucus since Iowa's nightmarish results issues. Early caucus results have shown 75,000 people already show up, just under the full 84,000 who participated in 2016 on caucus day. So far, Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders are leading the Democratic race in a very close battle. Jury deliberations continue in the Harvey Weinstein trial. Jurors have been unable to make a decision. They've deliberated 19 hours so far. Uh, two notes were sent yesterday with jurors asking about certain testimony and exhibit, uh, and some exhibits. Uh, the former Hollywood producer Weinstein's facing five charges, including rape and sexual assault. 638 coronavirus concerns are still on a lot of folks' minds this week. That's right, but there is some good news for Americans who are quarantined not too far away in San Antonio. Health reporter Haley Hernandez is here with that and the developing situation going on overseas. That's right. Good morning, guys. So hundreds of Americans <clears throat> have been quarantined in these past few weeks since being evacuated from Wuhan, China. Yesterday, almost 100 of them were released in San Antonio. 90 Americans were allowed to leave Lackland Air Force Base after a 14-day quarantine. Of the 235 people who have been there, only one person has been confirmed to have coronavirus. 144 others remain at Lackland to con continue finishing quarantine. More tourists are being allowed to leave the Diamond Princess cruise ship, even as more passengers are are confirmed to have the coronavirus. 11 of 13 Americans evacuated from the ship tested positive yesterday for the virus, bringing the U.S. total of infections to 26. They're all being treated in Nebraska. Some of these patients are being cared for in a facility that's successfully treated patients with Ebola. In South Korea, tensions are running high. 500 people from one church are quarantined and being tested for coronavirus. This after dozens of church members tested positive. Globally, more than 76,000 people are infected and 2,200 have died. Most of those cases and deaths have been in China. And it continues. Haley, no, thank yep. you. 639, now this weekend, baseball's back. Astros take on the Nationals in their first spring training game out in Florida. First uh, look, we'll see of the guys uh, out there on the field under new skipper Dusty Baker. And since the sign stealing, of course, first pitch at 5.05. Rockets put a beat down on the Warriors last night, 135-105, the final. Uh, Jeff Green, the team's brand new forward, showed up big with 17 points. Fellow newbie Damari Carroll picked up a couple points as well. Uh, but a big win can't come without drama. Second technical foul of the night on Russell Westbrook after that uh, elbowed one of the Golden State players, and then he went over and argued with the bench for a little bit. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Rockets blew him out in the game, which is uh, really all that matters, and they'll be back at it tomorrow night against the Jazz in Utah. The NFL has punted, sending its labor agreement and a possible expanded playoff system into the players' hands. The league's 32 team leaders met yesterday and accepted a new collective bargaining agreement. Part of that deal would move the season to 17 games games and expand the playoff field to 14 teams. Now the players' chance, the players' reps, will meet today and mull it over. We know J.J. Watt's not happy about it. He put this tweet yesterday. Hard no. 
That's a hard no from JJ. But anyway, there's uh, some wheeling and dealing left yeah. to go because there is money on the table, and sometimes that changes mm -hmm. things. We will see what happens. 641 now. Let's go to Justin oh, yeah. with a check on our weather. It looks beautiful. Looks nice, cold. doesn't it? Yeah, well, it's cold, but at least the sun is back today. I mean, you know, last couple of days, you can see any of this. All of the tops of them were just, like, you know, samurai off, just, just sort of fruit ninja. You couldn't even see the top of them. We've got 40 up at Bush right now, 45 in Galveston. Katie's sitting just at or around that number. And there's 30s out there, too. Look at this. Bryant College Station at around 35 degrees, 36 up into Huntsville, and 38 in Cleveland, Dayton, and down to Anahuac as well. And look at the wind, 24 mile an hour wind that's been gusting up to about 30. 30, 35 down on the island. So at least we've got dry weather for the second weekend of Mardi Gras, but it is going to be chilly out there. So if you're headed down there tonight or this weekend, make sure you've got a jacket. Probably need one most of the day. As Eric, we're only going to see the temperatures struggle to get up into the mid 50s for our Friday afternoon. All right, a little cool out there, Justin, but hey, sunshine, we like that, definitely. We also like the fact that we've got a pretty decent morning commute going on. We do have one tragic thing, uh, auto pedestrian crash. This is at Tidwell and Lockwood, north side of town. Avoid this intersection while they continue the investigation on this. Uh, a very unfortunate accident there. Uh, but overall, your drive is looking pretty good. North Freeway, 36 miles per hour around the Shepherd Curve. We've got a beautiful morning. Weather is cooperating. Visibility good. Roads are dry. And it looks like not that many people are on the roadways right now. Your inbound drive time is looking fine in the green across the board. 18 minutes in from Pearland. That is the slowest drive right now. You can get all this information anytime you want it. Click to Houston.com slash traffic. Back to you. Eric, thanks. All right, washing your clothes, your sheets, your towels. Are you doing it right? That is the question. Coming up, I'll show you how often you should be doing your laundry and the answers might surprise you. Hey, we are live on the Slots float here for the Knights of Momus Grand Night Parade. I told you we were going to show you behind the scenes, so come on. Come up here, Caesar. We want to take a look around. I just want to show you all these beads lined up on every single one of these 24 floats, ready to throw them out. 60,000 pounds of beads. But look at this. I thought I was going up the stairs. This is a porta potty on every float. Essential, right? I never thought about that. We've got lots more behind the scenes things to show you coming up. Some people wait to do their laundry, like when they run out of clothes or spill something on their favorite shirt. But have you ever wondered if you're washing them too much or too little? I talked to a local doctor about washing things like your sheets, your towels, your jeans, even your undergarments, ladies, to find out, am I doing this right? I like to wash three times a week to make sure everything is good, clothes is clean. How often do you wash your sheets? Maybe once every two weeks. Everyone is different, but you have to think about this. The average person is supposed to get eight hours of sleep a night. That's 56 hours a week of leaving body oils and dead skin cells in our beds. So the question is, how often do you really need to be washing your sheets? For sheets, I say at least weekly. You have, you know, dander if you have pets, you've got bacteria, there's some fungi. Sometimes depending on, you know, your living situation, you're also prone to mites, dust mites, and things like that. Bed bugs is also something you worry about. Dr. Sukumbi says once a week is the minimum. If your four-legged friend sleeps in your bed with you, she says throw your sheets in the washing machine at least twice a week. How often do you bring your towels here? I mix them in at least once a week too, you know? I mean, because, yeah, towels, that's pretty important. I would say pretty much washing your towels after about every three to four uses. Also important for the ladies, undergarments. For women, of course, you know, we have, you know, bras in rotation, so we kind of wear, you know, one every other day. So every two to three wears is perfectly fine. And if you use shapewear, Dr. Sukumbi says it's okay to wear it a couple of times before washing. What about your jeans? Um, maybe like, I don't know, it depends on how busy I am that week. Maybe once a week, twice a week. Which is in line with what Dr. Sukumbi recommends. At least after every couple of wears to wash your jeans. Dirty jeans can actually, no one here says they wash them, but it can cause redness and irritation to your skin. The doctor says a lot of people might have heard of putting your jeans in the freezer and that will kill bacteria and actually keep them from fading. But she does not recommend that. She says the best thing to do is just put them in the washing machine. I mean, you break them in and they get comfortable. Yeah. So why would you want to yes. ruin, ruin that, that right? ruin that exactly. feel? Unless I get a big stain. Yeah. Well, I think even the fabric makers tell you not to do it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it keeps it. 
nicer for longer. Exactly. There you yeah. go. All right, 647. Happy washing out there. You got to get it done. <laughs> right How's right. the traffic picture, Eric? Great. Looking good. Uh, major crash free. Uh, and we've got fewer cars than normal on the road. So, yeah, we'll have an update for you in just a couple of seconds. Nice. That is a nice Friday for sure. I tell you, it's cold out there this morning. We've got temperatures in the mid 30s as you get up towards the Brazos. We've got mid 40s as you get down to the coast with a wind. You better hang on to the two pays because they are flying down there so far. Cap and size relief camera looks pretty good. A okay there. Nice to see the uh, skyline again. That's something we hadn't seen the last couple of days because of the low clouds that were around. They'll just kind of murky weather. Uh, this is a live shot from right here at Channel 2. As Eric mentioned, there's a little bit of light traffic moving in, but everything's moving A okay so far. Temperatures out there sitting anywhere from the low 40s to the mid 40s as you get down to Galveston. Here's a live look. I'm going to kind of step out of the way. Look at the tent just ripping with the wind. It's been blowing anywhere from around 25 to 30 miles an hour. Wind gusts have been higher than that in some spots as well. It's currently 45 degrees. Should be a nice weekend though for Mardi Gras. It is going to be chilly. Make sure you've got a jacket if you're out there, especially for tomorrow night. As Amy's been mentioning, we're going to be uh, showing the Moments Parade live here at 630 on Channel 2. We're very excited about that. All kinds of folks are going to be covering it. We've got temperatures out there in the mid to upper 30s to low 40s, so certainly jacket weather this morning. Wind should start to back off as we get into the afternoon, and partly because we've got this huge dome of high pressure. You don't know there's not much cloud cover out there across much of the country, and that's because that high has got everything settled out and kind of clearing out the storm systems. Meanwhile, as we get into this afternoon, we should be able to get up into the mid 50s, but then watch this. Clear skies, the winds will be much calmer by tomorrow morning. Widespread upper to mid 30s and even some spots could see a little bit of frost as we get in towards northern counties by tomorrow afternoon, though. We'll get back up to around 60 and overall a really nice looking weekend forecast. Warmer than that, nearly 70 Sunday. Another front comes through Monday and that'll clear things out, but it certainly cools us off as we get ready for cook-off next Thursday, Eric. All right, yeah, rodeo time already. Hard to believe. All right, your morning traffic on this Friday is looking good. Everybody's playing nicely, or at least most people are. We do have a stalled vehicle northbound on the north freeway. You can see on the inset here, it does the northbound side of things. The left shoulder is being blocked. Actually, I believe it's a left lane because there really aren't any shoulders this portion of the north freeway. So uh, it is a little bit uh, slow through that stretch. Minor delays on the outbound side of things. A bigger picture, uh, northwest freeway is flowing nicely 16 minutes inbound 18 minutes in from Pearland 28 minutes in from Clear Lake those are the two areas where traffic is the most sluggish overall though morning commute looking all right back to you guys all right nights of moments here we go I get ready spinner. this morning we are ready from oh actually I think one of them broke we broke Sorry. one we're not paying. <laughs> no, Amy already bought him anyway. Uh, Amy yes. Davis. Yes, Amy Davis leading the charge, getting ready. Galveston live for this big parade. Amy, you've got a friend there. We do. So this is Rob Kirshner, but for now, we are the king and the queen above the royalty parade flow. Don't tell anybody. I hope the king and queen aren't up watching this morning. I know. Hopefully not. The king this year is uh, King Fri Frivolous 105, uh -huh. and uh, it's Gary Peters, and his uh, granddaughter is the queen this year, and it's uh, Franny Kuznarek. Uh, they're both thrilled and super excited about uh, being king and queen this year. It's very cool. So they, this float was somewhere among uh, the beginning of the parade that starts at 630. It's towards the front half, yeah. And, 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 and so I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. I get like the beads, but I kept wondering what all of these are on all of the floats. <laughs> Duh. And uh, uh, King Frivolous's job is to pr uh, promote merriment, and uh, that is for the drinks. That is for the <laughs> drinks. And then you'll see off to the side of us too, guys. You're seeing artists paint these um, parade floats because you had local artists come in. Uh, they need touch-ups. Some of them are original, but you have new ones as well. Before we do, we have uh, I think uh, seven new floats that have been designed this year, and lots of older floats that have been. Uh, kind of re repainted and, and touched up. So. Yeah. Rob, thank you so much. You can see all of the floats and you can see the Knights of Momus Grand Night Parade on Channel 2 tomorrow night at 630. Either come down to the island or just turn it on Channel 2 and watch from the comfort of your own home. The weather's supposed to be great. Yes. Frank, all right. Frank promised. Happy <laughs> Mardi Gras. We got to get some beads uh, out there. Guys. You got happy it. Mardi Mardi Gras. Back We're throwing them too. Woo. Coming thank on you, final Andy. check of traffic and weather. <laughs> 652 on Channel 2 News today. Breaking news out of Northeast Houston this morning. You are looking live from Sky 2 at a deadly accident. Police say someone is dead after they were hit by a vehicle. The police have Tidwell blocked off right now near Lockwood. It's unclear how this crash happened.
Some more breaking news this morning. Police are now trying to figure out why a man and woman were murdered in a Texas City mobile home park. Officers are telling us the suspected gunman was later found dead after a crash during a chase. Uh, Vincent Crivelli is telling us more from Texas City this morning. Oh, and tonight, good morning. The murder investigation here continues. Take a look behind me. Authorities are wrapping things up. They hope to leave within the next 45 minutes. Now, this all started around 8.30 last night when shots rang out. A man and a woman were killed inside a mobile home. Authorities tracked down the suspected shooter in Dickinson. He sped off in a truck, and there was a high-speed chase on I-45. The pursuit ended when the suspect crashed into a retaining wall in Webster. Authorities say the 39-year-old suspect died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Now, with Authorities are trying to figure out what the motive was for the suspected double murder suicide. Reporting live in Texas City, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. Developing now, the San Jacinto River Authority recommending Lake Conroe levels continue to be lowered. Uh, Channel 2 Sophia Ojeda with more on uh, the decision, and folks don't necessarily agree with it, all of them. Yeah, it's very split on both sides. The San Jack River Authority voted last night to lower the lake gradually through December 2022. Those who live around the lake do not want the lake lowered. Those who live south and southeast around Kingwood, they do want it lower to prevent flooding to their homes. Others are worried about boating this Labor Day weekend. At last night's meeting, it was decided the lake will be lowered one foot in the spring, one foot in the fall. In September, it would be lowered by another six inches. If there's a named storm, it could be lowered again to another six inches. This is a recommendation the city of Houston now has to decide. Reporting live in Conroe, Sophia Ojeda, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, time saver traffic. Now, the issues that we're dealing with on the morning drive are few and far between, but they all seem to be centered around the North Freeway. One outbound, we've got a crash blocking a couple of left lanes there at Gulf Bank, so outbound commuters definitely be aware of that. A little slow go right now. Hopefully, they get it taken care of pretty quickly. Hazmat spill, feeder road at Spring Stubner southbound on the North Freeway, not affecting main lanes. Overall, your drive is looking pretty good through most parts of town. A little sluggish in from Clear Lake on the Gulf Freeway and in from Pearland, but otherwise just minor, minor delays. Justin. Thank you very much, Eric. We'll take that. It's chilly out there, though. Look at that. Mid-30s as you get up to Huntsville, up towards College Station, right around 39 in Tomball, and low 40s elsewhere as well. Plenty of sunshine today, though, so that should help, but we're only going to get up into the mid-50s today. A little warmer as we get to Saturday and Sunday before we'll see another little system bring in some rain early next week. All right. If you're hungry, sticky bun day. Ooh, nice. Tasty. Enjoy. Happy Mardi Gras.